Say goodbye to our stanced RS7. Our air springs came in all the way from Germany. We are going to throw them in the rear of the RS7 and we're finally going to feel what an 800 horsepower all wheel drive stage two RS7 with the beautiful sounding Army Trix exhaust actually feels like to drive. To install the rear suspension, I wanna button up the rear end once and for all on this car, at least the exterior of the rear end, which requires putting the rear fender liners in. And there's one last thing that just isn't working in the rear, that is my rear park sensors when I put the car in reverse the backup camera shows up but on the screen it shows an X over the park sensors I even press the park sensor button to make sure that they're just not manually turned off so obviously there's an issue back here somewhere now the guy at the body shop told me he plugged in all the rear parking sensors there shouldn't be a problem when I scan for a code I did find an open circuit issue which either means that there's something unplugged which is highly likely or there's damage to a wiring harness somewhere so we'll just go ahead pull the rear bumper off and I'm gonna look for any loose connections, missing connections that might be keeping our rear parking sensors from working. Also, while we're in there, we wanna grab the rear hookups for the exhaust valves, for the stock exhaust valves. Since we've got the Army Tricks exhaust, we're no longer using those, but if we can route them up close to where the tail lights sit, we still have to plug them in so it doesn't throw a check engine light. Let's get started. All right, so our parking sensors, uh, tested them again, still do not work. Code still comes back. So I trace this main harness that you see here. That is what's plugging into all of the parking sensors located you know, in various spots on the rear bumper. And I kind of just tugged on this to feel where it's coming out. Now it's buried back behind here, but look, I pulled this out. This has to plug into something and this is uh, what is causing our problem likely. So I'm just gonna kinda dig around here and find out what's not plugged into where, and then we should get our park sensors back. All right, back here, there's a couple modules in like a case, and I pulled this module out, and right there, that looks like where our missing plug goes. So I'm gonna just put it in, and then we'll try it again. Okay, we're gonna put the car in reverse, and there are our rear sensors. They work now, and I'm about to hit, I think, a blanket. So let me go and reassemble the rear bumper. We'll be able to go ahead and put our rear air springs in and take this car for a ride. All right, we're finally going to fix our stance issue. When we fix this, it should allow us to drive our car. We have our air springs here. They came in all the way from Germany. The guys at FCP Euro really hooked it up because these were actually a little bit more of a difficult part to get. We want to make sure that we are using the right side here. So this is a 002AA and this is a 001AA. So I've got to go ahead and check which one goes on which side. And then we're going to jack this car up off the ground. We're going to get these air springs thrown in. They should only take a few minutes. Really simple install.
restored the proper ride height to the car, we are almost ready to get in the driver's seat and take it for a ride. I just want to address one quick thing. A bunch of guys noticed two things. Number one, they noticed the trunk lid closed and they said, how did you fix the trunk lid? Well, I didn't. If you notice, it still goes down like really shoddy. And I think I figured out what it is though. I think it just needs a replacement set of electronic shocks on either side. I've ordered those and I'm waiting for those also from overseas. And the other thing is some people notice a sound of a misfire and they were correct. This car was experiencing a misfire on cylinder number seven, which is this side of the engine, second from the back. I had CC come over again because I didn't want to tear apart the engine bay myself. I thought that it was likely a problem with a coil pack or something. And somebody told me, look, that car's been sitting at the insurance lot for so long, just throw some fuel injector cleaner in it. So I threw a bottle of fuel injector cleaner in it and no joke, uh, the car's not missing anymore. We're gonna do one quick test with my uh, OBD scanner. Shout out these guys right here. Ansel, who sent me out this one. Uh, we'll go ahead and just do a quick scan of it. I'm gonna try and use this scanner right here to actually reset the airbag codes once we install the seat belts because this scanner is like a hundred-ish dollars and it supposedly will reset the airbag code. So for a hundred dollars, not having to dig up a control module for your airbag uh, is a bargain. I'll link this one in the description box below if you guys want to check it out, but we will be testing it further in another video. I've checked both the modules using this scanner. We found no trouble codes whatsoever. So our misfire is gone. This car needs some fresh gas. So let's see if we can get a little bit of fresh gas and see how it runs. Sounds great even inside the car. Check out those awesome backup sensors. Now guys, even though this is the first drive, this is not going to be a good first drive video. I promise you, the next RS7 video that we get, and I'm driving this car, I'm going to do some proper outside shots some inside shots, but for right now, I just want to take this car on a ride, make sure the air springs feel correct, and I can already tell you, just by starting this car up, the air springs feel much better than they were. Oh yeah, no seatbelts. Another reason why this is going to be, again, just a very short test. Now, before when that one air spring was popped, you could just feel that the car, it was almost bouncing when the car wasn't even moving and that's because it was trying to fill up air and there's so much weight on a spring that it's just a constant back and forth and it felt awful. Again, that was sitting still. This car feels really, really smooth right now. Sometimes when you got a stubborn baby cow on the road, you just gotta give them a little warning. Yep, that worked. There we go, there we go. For all the members of PETA that did not appreciate that, I understand I treat my animals with a lot of respect. I swear to you, you guys have seen it in past videos. This thing gets substantially louder. That was just a little bit, just a little bit to get them to move out of the way and it, it's effective. Now I'm talking about those air springs. I cannot forget to mention the guys over at FCP Hero who sent those out to me. I called them up and kind of showed them exactly what I was dealing with. I thought they were failed, but wasn't positive. They immediately said, hey, we're just gonna send you out two brand new ones. And I really, really appreciate it. They had to get them all the way from Germany. So they expedited that process and got them to me so I could throw them in the R7 as quick as possible and experience exactly what I'm experiencing now. They've got a great inventory. They'll sell you the dealer parts if you want them, but then they'll sell you the OEM quality parts for a lot less. And of course, they've got that lifetime replacement guarantee. That's a lifetime on any product they offer. Again, FC Piero, thank you so much. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be having this huge smile on my face and driving my RS7 right now. All right, we got some fresh gas. We're up to operating temperatures. Just let me show you guys something really quick. Again, Army Tricks exhaust button. This is the closed valve mode. I'm just gonna give it a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like inside the cabin. You hear a little bit of that turbo, just a little, little bit. And it's really, really pretty muted, but watch this. So you open up the valves and it's already louder. Now check this out. 
<laughs> and that's just a little, little bit of throttle. Second gear, only turning 2,000 RPM. Okay. <laughs> that was like half throttle. All right, this is first gear. Oh my, I'm almost afraid to do it. Oh my God. <laughs> that was like, that was quarter throttle in first gear. Listen to those noises. to give it that much acceleration with the exhaust closed and let's see how stealth it is just with the exhaust closed so exhaust is now closed and let's see here we'll go yeah it's amazing because it's just as fast it's just not as dramatic it's great i really appreciate you watching this one i promise the next video we're going to get this out on an open road where we can really really feel what this is like and really hear what this thing sounds like i can't wait to get outside and get some rolling shots of the car because it sounds incredible inside i'm guessing it's going to sound even more outrageous outside if you enjoyed the noises you just heard be sure to hit that like button thank you so much for watching and i will catch you very soon Thank you.